Thanks for joining us again. This is Barry Kazire. Get ready for some real live marketing. Are you a small business owner that is confused over your accounting records? Accounting by Art can help you eliminate this confusion with a free initial one-to-one consultation. Art offers QuickBooks training seminars covering both QuickBooks desktop and QuickBooks online, as well as addressing your specific needs and questions. Visit accountingbyart.com and set up your free consultation today. If you're looking for high quality ink for your home or office at a great price, CR Office Technologies Inc. has the ink you need at the price you want. Visit CROfficetech.com. That's CROfficetech.com to get the price, the quality, and the service you've been looking for. Hello. Welcome to today's episode of Real Live Marketing. Hey, so today we're going to be talking about LinkedIn with our guest, Kathy Bernard. Now, LinkedIn, in case you don't know, is a business-orientated social networking service. It was actually launched in 2003. It's mainly used for professional networking. The site is available in 20 different languages. As of 2013, LinkedIn had more than 300 million members in over 200 countries and territories. Basically, what LinkedIn does is allows workers and employees to create profiles and connections to each other in an online social network, which presumably represents real-world professional relationships. This list of connections that you create can be used in a number of ways. Obtaining introductions to possible connections that could be valuable for your business. Job finding. Employers can find possible people to hire. Job seekers can review the profiles of hiring people, hiring managers. People can like and congratulate each other for updates, new jobs, moderated discussion groups, job listings, thought leadership articles, and even paid advertising are some of the primary ways that LinkedIn is used. Your own personal profile is a major key aspect of your utilization of LinkedIn. Today, our guest is going to talk about how to fully optimize that profile so that people can find you, the kind of people that you want to find you, so that you can make the most of LinkedIn. Right after today's show, I'm going to share with you a special networking tool from one of my favorite books on LinkedIn, and I'm going to recommend that book and tell you how to get a hold of it. So here we go. Hope you enjoy today's show with Kathy Bernard on LinkedIn. And before we get into the show, here's a couple of our friends who make this show possible. Feeling lost with accounting, bookkeeping, or payroll for your small business? Accounting by Art offers a free one-on-one consultation for the state of your business. Art Stump has years of experience helping small business owners with their accounting needs. He also offers QuickBooks training seminars covering both QuickBooks desktop and QuickBooks online, as well as addressing your specific needs and questions. Seminar participants also get a free one-hour office visit after the class to be sure their QuickBook issues are solved to their satisfaction. Mention this ad at your consultation and get 10% off initial services when you sign up and pay for your first month. Visit accountingbyart.com today and get started. Tired of high prices and low service when purchasing ink for your home or office printer? CR Office Technologies offers their hassle-free guarantee. If it's not right, we'll make it right. They know that customer service is number one. At CR Office Technologies, you get great service on top of great products at prices that you can't beat. They have laser and fax toner cartridges, inkjet cartridges and paper, laser fuses and drum kits, copier toners, and more. Visit CROfficetech.com, that's CROfficetech.com, to get the price, quality, and service that you've been looking for. Welcome 
welcome to Real Life Marketing, and uh, welcome to my guest, Kathy Bernard. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So, Kathy, uh, you, your, the name of your business is called LinkedWise, um, and what I do is I help uh, companies with their LinkedIn, both training and services, to help them really shine on LinkedIn. Great. Companies and individuals. That's great. So, yeah, I, there are a lot of people that use LinkedIn, but it seems that there's not a lot of people who know how to take advantage of it. Fully. Right. right. It, it completely. I think most everybody's like, everybody's heard it's powerful, but they have no idea what they're, what they're doing. And most everybody just filled out their profile like three years ago and never went back. And they were like, well, it's not doing anything for me. So what I try to teach them is how to use it for marketing, fundraising, promotion or whatever. And that really helps them both for uh, businesses and for career. Great. I think we're going to end up doing a number of shows on LinkedIn, but uh, today we're going to focus on basically how to fill out your profile properly because, I mean, that's your starting ground. Correct? Right, right, exactly. It's, it's creating whatever you want to be found for, whether that means being found for your service or your business or if it be, means being found as the consultant to the stars or whatever it is you want to be found for, that's what LinkedIn can make can do for you. Great. Okay, good. And so uh, so you're from St. Louis? Right. I was born and bred all my life. <laughs> okay, great. Well, how did you come to, to end up focusing on LinkedIn as a profession? Well, um, when I was, I used to work in corporate communications and employee communications. And when I was uh, leaving one job, we took I took a voluntary separation. And as I was doing it, uh, what I realized is putting it out there, saying something like, I'm seeking a corporate communications job in St. Louis, please send leads. I got a lead uh, within a half hour, um, followed up with it um the the person said send me your resume i sent it to them they recommended me i got an interview in the in the next half hour they called me got the interview the next day and was hired by monday all because of posting something on linkedin and i'm thinking aha there's something to this to this site and so then i started teaching uh, job seekers how to do it and then what i realized is companies need to know how to use it as well and that's how i got into the teaching it for business Great. So you've had your own personal success finding work, right? And then, uh, and then I guess you found a lot of business leads using LinkedIn, right? So what I did is I started. Uh, well, I started a company called GetAJobTips.com where I do a blog, and I was helping job seekers by doing their uh, resume and their LinkedIn profiles. And from that, then businesses started saying, "Well, I." want to know how to use it for business purposes. And so then I started realizing there was a statistic I ran across that you have a 277% better chance of getting a lead from LinkedIn than from any other social media, including Facebook. And I thought there's, there's a lot of businesses that could benefit from LinkedIn. That's right. Yeah. And from what I understand, there's like a really small percentage of businesses. Like, I think it was like the statistic I saw, like 18% that actually even utilize it properly. Right, exactly. They may have a company page, but it may not have a logo. They may not have any copy out there. So just they don't use it very wisely. And then one thing they don't realize is that they get people following their company. They can look at that list and see who's interested in their company, whether that would be a candidate for a job or, or a customer that's following them because they're passionate about their product or service. And so they make very little use of LinkedIn. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So it can be used for, obviously, it can be used for getting a job. It can be used for your business. And on LinkedIn, everybody has a personal page, which is their profile, their online resume, their whatever you want to call that. And then they have their company page, which is a Correct. separate thing. Correct. So, uh, so you think the company page is important as well? It is. The company page is important, but I think their, their, their personal profile is also probably the most important. So what they want to do in their profile is establish who they are both as a personal, as a person and also establish themselves as part of whatever their company, if, if that's their company or if they work for an organization, what part that plays um, on their profile because everything that they do now and in the past is important as far as as being strong on your profile. Great. Well, LinkedIn pretty much it sort of walks you through how to what to fill in and makes you fill in everything, and that's pretty good. Well, it's pretty good, but most people don't fill it all in. Like the, I think what they do is they'll fill in part of their profile, and they'll think, oh, I'll come back here, and then maybe five years later, they still haven't come back there. And so, so things that I see that people are doing is they don't fill out their summary, and you have... 2,000 characters to pack that summary with what you want to be found for. They're not completing their experience section. They're only putting their titles in, and they, they're leaving off 
the, all of those job duties that they've done, they could really make them stand out either for their business or for their career. So, you know, and then just all along the way, they're not filling out their headline, their job titles. They're just not really working it. They just did the bare minimum. And that's the result they're getting is the bare minimum. Right. So like, uh, so your first piece of advice would probably be when you're following LinkedIn's instructions, uh, do it fully. Right. And then don't, uh, don't act sparsely and, or don't, you know, do, don't be uh, begrudging or what's the word I'm looking for. What's right. That? Don't, don't, don't be sparing in yeah, what you're doing. The, yeah. 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 Don't be stingy with your words. Right. Exactly. Uh, well, and I'll give you an example, like in the summary section, and even I didn't know this for the first few years that I was teaching LinkedIn, it, it, the summary section is huge. And what you want to do in the summary section is say, okay, this is my brand. This is who I am, whether for your company or for yourself. And some people, what they do is they divide it up, you know, where their company, takes a paragraph and they do a paragraph where they really go into detail. But what you really want to do is pack it with keywords for uh, whatever you want to be found for. And they'll actually show you, even on a free account, they'll show you, you might want to add these words to your summary. So take those to heart. But if you have a premium account, particularly the job seeker account, you can see the keywords that people are using to find you. And it, it it's really transforming that if you put the keywords into your summary section, you're going to show up much higher in search for what you want to be found for. Great. So you want in that summary, you want to, anything that you might want to be found for, you want to include there. Right. So it's just for example, so like my background is corporate communications, marketing. So you, the words, so people are always like, well, what are keywords? And so that would be corporate communications, internal comm, employee comm communications, public relations, marketing. But it also gets into things like um, budgeting and cross-functional team leadership and, and everything. So if people have the premium account and you apply for a job, you want to look to see what keywords they're listing there. And it, it's it's like, oh, my goodness, so that's what they're looking for. So so in your case, you know, with marketing and advertising, you want to make sure you get those words listed in your summary, not just in your skill section, but in the summary as well. Great. Great. So like uh, so I've got in there web design, email marketing, social networking, SEO. Right. Those are like the key postcards, newsletters. Uh, all those things, all those things that what you want. Yeah. Cause that's what you want to be found for. And then you may want to include the, about this radio show. You want to include that in there. Maybe that you're looking for, you know, additional, um, you know, uh, interview guests or anything like that. Anything you want to be found for, that's what you want to put in the summary. Good. So podcasting, or what do you want to put exactly. in there? Right. Inter exactly. You know, guests, possible guests. Exactly. And so, and, and that just kind of says, cause the new, the, the program is fairly new. And so sometimes we forget that the, your profile is this living, is this living entity. And sometimes we just stick with what we always had. And it's like, Oh, I need to update this like every week or month or something, because there's always something new happening in your life. That's great. So how often, so that's just your summary. Yeah, you're right, is all all right. we're talking about there. That's right. only one part of it. Right. How often would you say that uh, we'd want to go through and maybe update our our LinkedIn profile. Well, one of the things that I do in my summary, this also works really well. If you're trying to get more skills endorsements is what I do is I p put the first thing I'll put, welcome to my profile. Please feel free to invite me to connect so that you get some interactivity with other people. And then after that, I actually count up how many skills endorsements I get for each skill. And I put the total out on my summary. So I'll say something like 4,815 skills endorsements for communications excellence. And the reason why that works really well is because people see that on your summary go, oh, well, she likes to get skills endorsements. And so then I get more. And by teaching that to other people, they're like, oh my goodness, I've gotten so many more. And then by having endorsements, Endorsements, that's another way to help show up higher and search for what you want to be found for. That's interesting. Yeah. So like if I wanted to be, uh, if I wanted yeah. to beef up a particular area endorsement wise, I would mention maybe that I'd uh, like, for instance, websites. Right. Uh, I'd mention that I'd built how, you know, hundreds of websites. Right. And, and 85 um, endorsements for website design. And then people will be like, oh, okay, so I'll endorse them for that too. And people can go to your profile and actually go to the skill summary and just endorse you for what you want to be endorsed for. If they go and look at your profile, there'll be a little blue uh, crosses next to each one and they can just endorse you. Well, they're actually gray. And then when they click it, they can endorse you. And then you, um, then you can click each one of those and it endorses you automatically rather than just those suggestions up at the top. Cause mm -hmm. some of those suggestions are kind of weird. They'll be like, Oh, you want to be endorsed for mountain climbing? And it's like, no, <laughs> but that's cause LinkedIn suggests them to people. So anyway, so that's one 
way is just get people to go to your skills section and actually endorse you for those by clicking the little gray cross, um, plus signs and it turns blue and then you've endorsed the person for all the skills that you want to endorse them for. Wow. And then if you get more than 99, you can sk click on the blue and see how many you really have if, once it goes past 99. So it's right. kind of an interesting button to keep tabs. But you actually have to manually add it up for your summary section. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, like here it says that you uh, 424 people uh, endorsing you for newsletters. Right, exactly. And so then when you just see the 99 plus, it's the same thing like they do with the only telling you you have 500 plus connections because they think they don't want you to be – um, you know, out there trying to just get skills endorsements, but it is a good way to show up higher in search, whether for business or career. And it gives you a full list of everybody who's endorsed you personally exactly. for, for that particular thing. Yeah. Endorsements and people are like, oh, I, I hate that doing that endorsements because it feels so fake. People just clicking and I don't really know them, but I was like, it's just one more way to impress the LinkedIn algorithm for what you want to be found for. Sure. So, and it all adds up, whether you have a large connection, whether you're filling out your profile, all those things add up together to help you show up high. Yeah. And I can legitimately endorse you for, I mean, I, yeah. I haven't read your blog, but, but I could, yeah. you know, I could see that you've done a good job with copywriting, social network and social media marketing. So I know that you've done those. So I can very easily just click and endorse you for those exactly. things. Exactly. And here's the other thing is is when you look out on your profile about um, whether you're trending up or down out on the site, like if you go here on your homepage and you go to the uh, who's viewed your profile and it'll show you if you're going up or down, some of the reasons why you go up or down is whether you've endorsed somebody else. So endorsements and connecting with people and everything shows that you're being active on the site and that actually helps you show up higher in search. That makes sense. I mean, it's just a, it's a matter of like uh, the system rewards you for participation. Exactly. Helping other people and then it uh, actively tries to get you help in return. Right. And say, like the same thing out on the groups, you know, the LinkedIn groups. Mm -hmm. They if you you don't really get any brownie points for posting things, but you get brownie points for replying to other people's posts. So that's another thing that impresses LinkedIn. So you want to comment, you know, great article or whatever on other people's uh, posts, and that really helps. That makes sense. Uh, so so basically, uh, if you're participating and commenting on other people's posts, that gets rewarded more so. Right, than, than actually posting yourself. So it, it's, it's a funny thing. And so one of the tricks too is so if, you, if, if your listeners are, if they have created like a blog post or something they want to tell people about, have somebody else remark about it or have somebody else post it for you because a lot of groups will penalize you if you post your own stuff. But if you get a friend to post it, then they think your friend is being helpful and it doesn't look like you are... Um, self-promoting okay okay that sounds great now what about uh now listing off my past job experience uh yeah how far back into the past do i want to go it depends on what you're building your case for so if you've done things in the last 15 years that pretty well tell the story you don't have to go back further than that but if there's something from way back that you really want to be known for then i would definitely say um, include that. So I tend to go back pretty far because I worked at like Enterprise Rent-A-Car and Brown Shoe and, and I want people to know that I've had those experiences and it helps with, uh, by including them on your profile, then people can connect with you from those past companies. So I would say go back pretty far. Great. And then if you want to end off, like mine goes back basically, I guess it goes back about a decade really. It shows my marketing career, right. my, my career, you know, uh, owning my own business and the nonprofit that I worked that I've done right. uh, over the last you know, 10, 15 years. But if you say if you ever worked at a corporation before that, you mm -hmm. may want to add that so then all of those people can inv invite you to connect or you can invite them to connect as a col as a past colleague. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, finding that's another good way to find people is Right. Then we're into your education, which is another way to, to Right. And, and the thing is, is with the classmate one, is one of the things to do is make sure you're listing your education. And then if you ever go out to interests education, you can go out to your college and you can 
it can actually help you drill down to find out, okay, who did I go to college with that works at Boeing? Now let me drill down and say who worked at Boeing and also works in advertising or whatever. So it can really help you. And then you can say, hey, you know, I don't know you from Mizzou, but we both went to Mizzou and I see that you're at Boeing and you work in the advertising department. So that's how much it can really help you. And you can actually even use the education section to go to somebody else's school and drill down and find people at the right places. And you can even do that for people that was were there years before you were years after and use the uh, your education as a way to uh, connect with people or to find the right people at the right places. That's great. So I can go in there and I can find out who graduated. Yeah and, if, yeah, and if you just click on the different things and say, okay, show me who's living in St. Louis, show me who's at Boeing, show me who's in these fields, and you can drill down right to the right people. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, it's it's a really powerful tool that's really buried. <laughs> Most people don't find it. So, so I can actually go to the school. I can find out who my classmates were, what right. they're doing and living. Maybe anybody who's owns their own business who might right. be interested in marketing these days. Right, and then just say and reach out to those people. Exactly, and then just say you know go Tigers or whatever and, and connect with them. So I did. I connected with a lot of people from Mizzou um, that that were in my eight age range. So mm-hmm. and most people like if you have. When I invite people to connect, I always customize my message by going to their profile and then clicking connect. If you do it from any list, you can't customize the message. But if you go to their profile, then you can customize the message. And what I do is I just create a Word document for different people. Like I connect with all the entrepreneurs in St. Louis and, you know, I do a message. I'm passionate about the St. Louis startup movement and I like to help entrepreneurs. If I can be a help to you, let me know. Well, they're like, they need money. They need marketing help. They need all sorts of things and they and they accept my connection. So. That's great. That's so. fantastic. So it's a great way to find great connections. Yeah, exactly. So customizing messages, people don't often do that, and that really can help. So, And then I also always respond to invitations to connect, and people don't often know that you can respond to them by clicking on the little triangle next to accept, and you could say, you know, thanks, Thanks, Barry, for the invitation to connect. I'm I'm doing this, I, you know, I market this or that. If you're ever in the need of that kind of service, let me know. That's great. Okay, good. So um, then the other information that you might want to fill out, what what else do you feel like would be important? Well, I think it's good to put at least that you can list up to 50 skills. So I think it's good to list the skills. And then if you can, what I would suggest is endorse other people for their skills. And about 50% of them are going to come back and endorse you for their skills. Um, Some people get very nervous if someone that's kind of a stranger to them endorses their their skills, but for the most part, people are appreciative of, of being endorsed. And, um, the other thing, and and by endorsing people, like I said, you show up higher in search. Uh, other things I would say is if you can get written recommendations about you, they're not quantifiable, but it's always nice to either have endorsements or recommendations saying that you're awesome. It's not just you saying you're awesome. And, um, I found, I found on the written recommendations, that the best way to get those is to give them out. Exactly, right? Recommendations about other people. It's really easy. You just go to their profile and then you click the little triangle up at the top and then you can just click recommendation and write them. And then one thing I would say is if you want people to write recommendations about you, send them a resume or send them your sales sheet or whatever so it makes it easy for them to write about you. Because sometimes people don't, they like you, but they don't know what you what you did or what you want to say. So I always try to inform them first. So That's great. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I found that a good strategy would be like take all your contacts and just go through them and find the people that you actually have something good and nice that you'd like to say about them right. and just sit there and, you, and write 15 or 20 of them. Right. And then you're pro- probably going to get about 15 or 20 recommendations back. Exactly. And that's another thing that can, the act of doing recommendations actually helps you show up higher in search. So even though the, the written recommendation isn't quantifiable, the act of doing recommendations for others is so. That's great. Now, can you share these recommendations on your website as well? Uh, well, what I do is I take all of the recommendations and I put them into a sheet. And so whenever I'm applying, if I was applying for a job anymore, I would send that attachment as a, as, as a, word, a word document and send that. Um, or if you're in business, I would take that sheet and you know run those as some of your, of your recommendations or testimonials about your business or service. So it's they're easy to, to, to copy and use. So. Fantastic. Good. 
Good. Anything else you want to tell us about our profiles here? Uh, well, I would just say, you know, just be active. Just keep doing things like, well, one of the things is like there's the contact information at the top. That just goes to your contact information, but there's a place down at the bottom of your profile will say, contact, you know, how do you want to be contacted or, or whatever. And I would put your phone number and your email if you're comfortable with that out there. Because if you're in sales or marketing, you want to be found. You don't want people to have to go... Uh, through extra steps to be able to find you. So use that contact information to invite people to reach out to you. Great. So now I heard, uh, one other thing I heard is I could put on here uh, next to this website section, I could say something like, listen to my podcast. Right. Well, one thing you can do is where in the where you're putting the website, because one thing listen it'll say is it company website. You can change that, Put choose the other instead of company, then you could put your web address in there. I mean, you can put the name of your website into that box. So choose other. This is in contact yeah. information. Yeah, yeah in contact information. But now you can type your com your your web address, your website name there. Otherwise, it just shows up as company website and not the name of your company. So I could say, "Listen to my radio show." Yeah, it depends on how many characters they're going to let you have. Yeah, so you could do that, or you could call it by the radio show name. But either one is good. And then we could put the actual um, link to the. To the podcast there. Right. And you can do multiple web addresses. So you could have one web address for your for your marketing business and one web address for your podcast. Fantastic. So yeah, so it's so LinkedIn is really good that way and it's really good for um, so if you want to be found by people, I would just say work it and every part of it in your headline, make that be your brand, um, in your current job title. Whatever it is that you want people to find you for, you want to make sure you're working your LinkedIn profile so you can be found. That's great. So I'm putting here uh, for, you know, for my uh, find my next seminar and sending them to, you know, barrykazire.com mm -hmm. uh, to that link where they can find my next seminar. I put on here my business uh, website and uh, so they can find out more about my company. Right. And then I put on here, listen to my podcast. And I've just sent them to reallivemarketing.com so they could listen to this radio show. Right, exactly. So, so as they're looking at all that information, they're going to find out that I deliver seminars, that I have a podcast, and these are additional ways they can contact me. Right, and that's on your contacts thing. So only your contacts can see that. But I would take the same information and replicate that on your summary section so that they can also find it there. And then in your headline, you may want to have... Uh, there's a hundred. You have 120 characters in your headline, so you want to work that. So you would may want to work that for both your business and for your seminars and for your um, for your podcast, so people can find you. Because eventually, you know, with interview guests, you want them to be seeking you out as well as you seeking them out. So it makes it easier. That makes sense. And that's right underneath my name, right at the top. Right. And one thing, too, to point out on your profile, one thing at the very top, you'll see where you can add a banner image up at the top. Even if you have a free account, you can add a banner image that goes behind your box with your picture. But what you have to do is for a free account, you have to size it. I think it's 1400 by... I forgot what it is, 400 or whatever. And it's kind of a weird, sh it's a very long rectangle. And then the box where your picture is kind of cuts it in the middle. But you can put some sort of thing like your logo or your picture or whatever. And that really helps you to stand out on LinkedIn when they visit your profile. It's like, ooh, that looks cool. So what did they do? So if you can get a hold of Photoshop or something to save your picture at that size, it can really help you stand out. Sure. Totally worth doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally worth doing it to personalize it. Right. That's great. Any other information here, just in scanning through this fo uh, this profile? Oh, okay. Well, one that other we thing should... that you want to may want to do is if you ever see there's when you're in edit profile and you see the little box with the plus sign next to the edit with the little edit pencil, the little box with plus sign allows you to add rich media to your summary section, your experience section, or your education section, and that allows you to be able to upload a, a presentation video an online portfolio, uh, sales sheets, resume, anything like that. And so it's a great way for you to have like colorful visual images out on your profile. And they, you can not only do that for free on LinkedIn, but this, the sites that they link you to where you can upload your presentation or whatever, those sites are also free, like YouTube, 
um, slide share and different ones like that. So that's a great way to stand out as well. That's great. Well, give me an example where I might be able to add something like that. But what you do is, so you go to your edit profile, click on the square with a plus sign, and it'll say, do you want to upload a file or do you want to add a web link? Now, sometimes uploading the document won't let you do that. Like if you have a resume out there and you save it as a PDF, it may let you do it and may not. Uh, but the add a link, if you, it'll show you, here's the supporting companies and you go out there and it'll be like YouTube and you put the add, you get, grab that U2 address and you paste it in the box. So, um, it's on the square with a plus sign, click on that and then either add link or upload a file. And then if you do a web link, you can post it. You can't just do like a web link. Like if you have it for your company web link, mm -hmm. you have to actually put it out on one of their partner providers. And that'll be some very standard companies like, um, like YouTube or SlideShare, and it'll let you post it there. And then you can grab a web link from that company and post it there. Great. So I can post it on SlideShare or YouTube or right wherever on, I yeah, put yeah. it. Yeah. You could do up to, you can do two out on the summary, but you can also do it for each job that you've had. You can post two out on each job section. So it lets you add a lot of different images or, or it's, um, could be video, um, documents, anything that you want to post out there. So it's really nice. Sample, like yeah. um, just PDFs of the, maybe the websites I've, you know, right, designed. Great. Right. But like even a presentation. So like if you did a little presentation and you saved it to PowerPoint and then you put it out on SlideShare, you could post that. And then when people click on the image of your PowerPoint presentation, they can actually click through the slides and be able to watch your presentation. Great. So, so that would work for eBooks as well. Exactly. Yeah. And so some people, what they do is maybe they do a chapter of their eBook and then they could do something at the end to purchase the, you know, the whole eBook, click here, and then they could download the eBook from someplace else. Or... Great. So, so you could really uh, beef up this profile with a lot of Exactly. And it stands out because it helps you. It's more colorful. So you stand out from everybody else because you have all of those different things out there. And if, it, you know, like a for so for marketers, they could post um, their sales sheet or their presentation or a video about their company. That's great. Yeah. And there's, yeah, they, and it looks like it supports a lot of. Uh, different media. It really does. Yes. And they even have like sound you could do. Um, so like if you had audio, you could put your podcast out there actually, cause they do audio. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's great. So we could put one of my episodes up there, maybe welcome to the show. Right. And I, I'm wondering with the, with the audio, if the, I don't know this for sure, but maybe there'd be a static image that you have that, so then it's not just the audio, but there'd be a way to, to tie both those in. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. that would be the coolest thing. Otherwise do you, you could maybe do a, um, a video version of it or whatever and, and reduce it to audio. Or something sure. Like it's that. on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah. So, so we, could, could do... we could put that up there. That's great. Okay. Good. Well, there's a lot to just filling out the profile for LinkedIn. Right. Exactly. And then don't forget there's on the, on the right side of your edit profile pages, the recommended for you. And that's where you could add a lot of different things to your profile, like projects, patents, um, you know, organizations and volunteer opportunities. But some of the project ones are kind of nice because you could list if you like for your agency that you've worked on some really neat projects and have uh, different images that you want to lead them to or whatever. So that could be, you know, did, did this project for such and such company. Good. So really making this robust and filling it out fully. I mean, does that... The more you fill it out, the more that helps you with being found. As Definitely, well. pretty much. I get all of for the for the last four years. Most of my business has come from LinkedIn, or or what's happened is partnership opportunities have come up. Like somebody sees what I post out on LinkedIn, and they're like, "Oh, I love that. Can you do it for my company? Or let's work together on something." So opportunities come up all the time because of doing things out on LinkedIn. Great. Well, let's take one thing and just kind of look through here real quick and see what we might punch up to, okay. to push that. Okay. Uh, we're both public speakers. Right. So what would be some of the things in just scrolling through my profile? Right. Okay. So right now, like in your headlines, we've got president at response with that. 
Um, and you've got web design, e-marketing in that, but you may want to, and you've got lead generation, you may want to sh shorten up where you have, and the many forms of lead generation, you may just want to shorten up all your words so that you can fit in podcast or whatever you want to do for your, sh for your show. So you may want to do that because once you reach 120 characters, it won't let you anymore. And then if you have the banner in the background, that could be maybe on one on the left side could be all about your, the marketing company or your seminars. And on the right side could be about your podcasting. And so just have an artist that would create something going across the spectrum like that might be kind of neat since you're doing two different things. Great. And then you've got on your contact list, you've got all your different information so people can reach out to you. So that's good. In your summary, one thing I would do is you've got keywords listed there, but I would pack it with even more keywords, maybe like 40, 50 keywords so that you can be found for all of those. So that would be every word that's used in marketing. So like you've got SEO, but you might want to also write out search engine optimization and then SEM and then write that out and, and just do all of those out there. So as many keywords as you can pack in. And then in your experience, you may just want to go in uh, and add more job duties because you have a thousand characters in each one of those. And so right now you've got president of response targeted marketing. But what I would do is behind president, I would put additional keywords that you want to be found for like SEO, SEM, um, direct marketing, uh, direct mail, put as many of those in there. And then I would probably have another category, uh, another new position where you're going to talk just about um, your podcast and your show and have another company for that one. And then do the whole, do the same thing with all of that and pack it with keywords yeah. and all that. What about me as a public speaker? Like and then you may want to do a third one for public speaker. And then yeah. what I did on mine is that I list all the different topics that I talk about. And then for public speaking, then you probably want to get in extra keywords like media spokesperson and um, public relations and anything that relates to that. So they'll actually give you those keywords when you put public speaker in there too, they'll get, They'll say, well, so does that mean you're also good at this and that? And so, you know, take LinkedIn's advice whenever something pops up and go, oh, okay, I should add that keyword in as well. But you can have up to three jobs listed for your current. So I would list all of them and really break it out that way, make it easy for people to find you. So, hmm. and then like where you've got the spokesperson, write out more, what does that mean? And, you know, what does it in there for them? But just always when you've got like president, fill it out with additional things that you want to be found for, like marketing research marketing, um, public relations or whatever, put those behind your title because people aren't just searching for you. If you think about it if for a market, they want, you want to be found for marketing and marketing research, right? So president, the word president isn't going to get you found for that. What's going to mm. get you found is the words behind that. So about what you do right there, right after the word president, Pre president, what I usually do is I always say, put it in parentheses and that just means you're being helpful and explaining what you can do. Sure. <laughs> so you put it behind there. And so, um, and then just think keywords in every section that you can. The more times you're using, for example, the words market research, the more times you use that, the higher you're going to show up and search all things considered. So okay. you want to do that. Great. And some people game the system where they may put market research and they'll repeat that 50 times in one section. So it's kind of like, a, you know, it's like SEO where people are gang gaming the system. And you don't ever know if LinkedIn's going to come in and punish them for that. But mm -hmm. at least, you know, if some people are doing that, you want to compete against them by doing it organically throughout. That's interesting. So I could add um, one, one of the things I could add. The next section here is skills. Right. Uh, I could add speaker, public speaking, exactly. educator, right. uh, podcasting, training, a, you know, training. I mean. Right. And those are those are all important right. to me. So I would add, I could add those, and I could actually drag those up to the top, even though there's only one or two. Right. And maybe my thought is, after listening to you, is I could include in my summary. I just started gathering. I've been doing this for a long time, but I just started gathering endorsements for for podcasting. Please yeah. endorse me for podcasting yeah. and explain how to do it. So how to how to go to how to because most people don't know that they can go to your profile, scroll down to that section, and just endorse you for podcasting. So you could train them on that or something at the end. Say you know scroll to my skills section and click pod, you know podcasting or whatever, and that's going to help you show up higher for that. Great. And I've got a lot of people that love my public speaking. They love coming and listen to me talk. So, yeah. so I can, I can send them here Definitely. to do an endorsement. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. You want to, and, and also get them to give you written recommendations about that as well. Cause people are going to read, well, how did he do? And people saying, oh, it was great. You know, so that, that's how you do that.
That's great. Great. What else would you do here? It, well, and I was just going to say, you can only add up to 25 skills. So that's the hard part is so if you add something and if you already got 50 skills, then you got to like let some of them go. So hopefully sure. you've got a few left over. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's a few I can like. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So if, the, you know, some of the ones that, you know, if you only have like three or four or five or whatever, then you can let some of those go. But it's it's painful. So now I can't add any in, uh, because I don't want to lose ones that have a lot of a big score to them. Great. And then let's see. Um and then in your education section, sometimes people will want to put, um, you could put in the courses that you've taken or, uh, and there's also a course section that, that's over to the right. So if there's something in particular you want to play up, you could add additional information on that. And then, oh, in the interest section. So when you get down towards additional info and interest, I take the same skills that you put, that you stuffed up in your summary section where you put all those keywords, I'd take the same keywords and put them down in your interest section because it's quantifiable. So I would fill that whole area with thousand characters worth of keywords that you want to be found for. Not just books, movies, and No, you know, no, what sailing. long walks by the sea. <laughs> yeah, forget all that. Just pack it with keywords to, to, to be found for. And then there's an advice for contacting Barry. And that's where I would put uh, I would put your phone number and your email address that you want to be found for. In fact, you may want to say you, you're seek you're looking for people People that you know interview guests and uh, people that want to do market research and in seminars and put and put all out there. You can put multiple things that you want to be contacted for. Great, great, yeah. and uh, good. Anything else that you no, recommend? That's just, I just recommend people working it out on LinkedIn, and I would say, uh, and don't be scared to connect with people um, because the larger your network is, the easier it is you're going to be found by the people you want to be found by. Good. And what um, what do you think about connecting with the competition? I do. I, you know what? I don't, I don't fear the competition because I think we all have different areas of expertise. And so I don't usually worry about that. And sometimes we end up partnering on things. So that's so, great. That's so. great. Well, great. And so uh, there's a lot more to know about LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, we could probably do another show or two <laughs> talking about that. Well, we, the, the whole, there's a whole reaching out thing too. So I, I also teach on that. So if you ever wanted me to come back, I could teach about all the different ways you could reach out and why you should. <laughs> That's great. And you'll help somebody. So uh, we're going to, one of the things yeah. I think we'll include in our show notes is we're going to show my profile now and I'm going to leave it alone. And then we're going to take a picture of it uh, after I clean it up using your advice so we'll we'll show some before and after right. of what you know what you could help people do with their LinkedIn profile. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, so that's 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 the kind of thing I do, and it's just exciting because you know I just got a call yesterday from a guy that I helped out in Connecticut. He was I had a lot of issues in his background that he was worried about. He wasn't going to find a job, and we fixed up his LinkedIn profile, and he got a job. Like he got four offers, and he got a job. Wow. So I mean, that's how what a difference it can make. So. That's really exciting. I, I, yeah. And uh, what do you charge somebody just like curiosity? for redoing there. Well, it, it depends on if so if I'm reviewing it, it's one price. But the main thing I do is I go through and I optimize people's LinkedIn profiles. And to do that, I charge $4.95. But it takes me like six to eight hours to just go through and optimize every section. So I pack it with keywords throughout on all of the different things wow. so it takes a long time to to do it really well but but don't let that scare you off just keep trying and improve in every different section so Good. and this is your primary form of advertising for your business right exactly linkedin works it works the best for me and i do a lot of public speaking as well on uh, on linked uh, linkedin and um, other social media so but Good. LinkedIn's my fave. <laughs> Great. Do you find people actually go through and they read, uh, they'll actually read this whole profile for somebody's whole profile? Well, you know, or? and what's the thing is about LinkedIn is you don't know why somebody's coming, how they arrived at your profile. And so that's why you want to have the keywords. They may arrive because they're looking for market research and they may. So they're looking for those. And LinkedIn, if you're looking for somebody with like market research, it will actually highlight it every time you've used it in your copy. So they don't read everything, but sometimes people are just like, wow, you really pumped yours up. You know, I, yeah, this thing's working for you to teach me how. <laughs> great. So, great. Yeah. Well, that's a great person. That one success story, the guy getting yeah. four leads uh, right away yeah. for a job. That's great. Any other success in the business side of things that you could tell me about? Right. Well, I mean, yeah. So people use it all the time. And so uh, I just have people that all the time I'll teach them how to do things. And they're like, whoa, now they're finding me. So before, you know, it, it's just uh, interesting where um, I was just talking to uh, to Ola from Eateria yesterday. And he was talking about how LinkedIn is their, their very best one for Eateria because restaurant managers and owners, they're finding them out on LinkedIn. And so um, it's it, it really does work. So it, you think sometimes, well, 
I'm on LinkedIn, I'm talking to everybody across the country. How is that going to work for me in St. Louis? But it really does help, you know, like you and I have met because of LinkedIn, because we found each other on LinkedIn. So it really can bring about connections that would normally never exist if, if people didn't know who you were from LinkedIn. That's great. Like we just started doing podcast production for people. Right. I imagine that would be a, you know. Exactly. A, or the fact that I'm a public speaker. Right. And everybody's got those those little things that they do that set them apart from everybody else. Right, yeah. As well, as well as, you know, just because you're close is sometimes a good reason to do business. Right. So all those things make a difference, it right. seems, in LinkedIn. Right, and exactly. And I, I just always say when I decided to move from corporate communications into uh, helping job seekers, I just one week just started evolving my LinkedIn profile. And in about a week, people started thinking of me being a, a career coach instead of being in corporate comm. And even the people who I used to work with in corporate comm come to me now for career coaching and for LinkedIn stuff. And so they're like, oh, okay, her brand now is LinkedIn. I'll go with it. And so people, it really can transform your brand depending on what you want to be known for. So LinkedIn is great that way. So. That's a fantastic tool. Great. Well, good. So um, what would you say uh, would be the mindset that somebody should approach this? If they're going to like um, take a particular mindset and approach filling out their profile fully, really optimizing it, uh, making it the most that they can, they're going to do it on their own. How would they approach it? Well, yeah. So I would say you don't have to, it, the one thing is, is it doesn't have to be perfect. Just keep working at it. And so I would say, you know, start with your headline and the top part and say, what do I want to be known for? Um, and you know, what's my product, what's my service, and then just kind of think that through and fill it out. And so it's not just a laundry list of what you've done before, but why does it matter for the people that are looking at you and, and try to just fill that out and just take it 20 minutes at a time or 15 minutes at a time until you've built something up. And and I guarantee you, as you do that and you start connecting with people, people are going to start reaching out to you and they'll be like, I don't know exactly what you do, but I need help with LinkedIn. Do you do that? And it'd be like, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. So it gives you those kinds of opportunities. So. That's great. That's great. Good. And what, what would you say? Um, you, it, most of us have our favorite books that help us in our career. We were talking about LinkedIn. Do you have any favorites? Um, not so much books, but I read a lot of articles on LinkedIn because most of the time I'll read it online and then I'll try it immediately afterwards. And so some, and the thing is, is with LinkedIn, any book that you buy is going to be outdated. That's my thing. Cause I've tried to do eBooks on LinkedIn. And as soon as I get it published, then they change something. LinkedIn changes stuff all the time. So that's what keeps me in business is because people are like, <laughs> I know this button used to be here and the button's not there anymore. And so that's all the time. So every time I do a LinkedIn presentation, I have to replace about 20, 25 of my slides every single time. So, wow. okay, great. Yeah. So job security. So do you write a lot of blogs on LinkedIn? I do. I write a lot of blogs about LinkedIn and I also, I lead three different sessions on LinkedIn uh, for c career, like what, what's new on LinkedIn. Uh, what, uh, and then I also do LinkedIn bootcamp and I also do one called, um, uh, attracting employers using LinkedIn. And then I also teach companies how to use LinkedIn. And I do one on uh, pumping up your LinkedIn profile for, for, for business. And then I also do one on reaching out on LinkedIn for business. So right. there's just so much to it. So those are half day sessions because there's so much to how to build your business on LinkedIn. So. Great. And, the, and you also blog on it so people can read about right. it. Right. Yeah. If you go to getajobtips.com is my blog that I do for job seekers. And then I and that's, link, easy, that's yeah. easily translatable into business. It, business. Right. And that's really what I've been doing is translating what I do. So a lot of articles that I write are both, I'll say, whether you're for business or, or for career. Good. And any favorite authors out there on the internet that you'd uh, send somebody to go, um, you know, watch or listen to or the, read? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I just read, I read everything. Like if it's an interesting headline, I'll read it. So that's kind of like what I do. But, okay. but LinkedIn is a great, uh, one thing that is LinkedIn for publishing. If you go to your homepage, um, you can publish your own article. So if you write interesting articles that you already have a blog post or something, go to your homepage. And then there's a section called, um, share an update. It's the little white box up at the top. Hmm. Okay. So like, yeah, if you click on your pencil right there and 
what you can do is you can actually just take your blog post and post it on here. And then you're a publisher on LinkedIn. Just kind of like if you've seen like Richard Branson mm -hmm. out here or yeah. Deepak, uh, whatever his name is, Deepak. Uh, Chopra. Chopra. Yeah. yeah, Chopra. They both are posting there and you can do the same thing. You can create an image up at the top. You can post your blog post there and it'll send it to all of your connections. Plus other people can follow what you're posting there. So I just started doing that and, and it's like, and then I looked the next day while well, I'm like, well, is anybody looking at this? And it said, 5,200 followers. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what? How did that happen? So it's, it's really a good way to do that. And people are like, oh, you were really active out on LinkedIn. And I'm like, well, it took me five minutes to post this. So it was really easy. So, um, so I would say if you're doing a blog post, definitely post it out there as well and build a following there. It's a little known, a uh, little secret. About yeah, exactly. Little secrets. And that's fairly new. So that works that's very well. So. That's great. And I imagine then you can find a lot of articles on LinkedIn on LinkedIn. Right. Exactly. About LinkedIn. And so I find a lot of different things, share a lot of articles and so that'd be another thing too is i'd say if you to become a voice of whatever you want to do share articles that other people have written out on linkedin just grab the web link and post it out on linkedin great so and people will think you that half the time they think you wrote it and that you're this great voice of whatever <laughs> good, good. So, just be sure to give credit yeah Thanks. exactly yeah. well the, the web link that you grab right. it has the it already does it, it so it's super easy gives the link back to their place yeah. and so. that's great yeah that's great we teach that in our social media talks yeah, yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, great. Uh, you've given us a lot of great data here. Uh, and this is just mainly on filling out our profile. Right. So we'll be covering more about LinkedIn, but that's a good place to start. <laughs> and uh, thanks again for coming. All right. Thanks so much, Barry. Enjoy it. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed that show. And you should utilize that information to improve your own profile right away. Now, like I promised you, I'm going to recommend to you my favorite book on LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn is constantly updated. And what I love about these authors is that they're constantly updating their book. You can actually download the newest version as well as get helpful videos from them on how to fully utilize LinkedIn. The name of the book is How to Really Use LinkedIn. There's a link where you can purchase this book in our show notes. Now, the tool from this book that I want to give you today is pretty fantastic. It's a great little introduction to the book. It's called The Golden Triangle of Networking. Now, the authors of this book go over that in order to get results when networking online, for example, with LinkedIn and offline, it's important to take into account some fundamental principles. One of them is called The Golden Triangle of Networking. So there's three elements to this triangle. It starts with give or share. The simple rule to think with is by giving and sharing, we improve our relationships with other people. This is the whole reason why I do a number of lectures every month in my community and why we founded this podcast. For some people, it's a little bit of a hard concept to think with because they think in terms of what they need instead of giving things away. Well, true enough, if I give away my computer, I don't have a computer anymore. But with regards to knowledge, when you share information like the authors of this book do or like we do in our talks and in our podcasts, you don't lose it. We both have it. So the golden triangle of networking starts with give or share. Now, the next part of this triangle is ask. When networking, it's important to ask people for their help. People like to help each other, especially if it doesn't cost them anything. However, the biggest problem is that we don't know how we can help other people. So help other people to help you is part of ask. Tell them what you're looking for and ask them for the help that you need. And finally, thank. Many of us don't thank people when we receive something. All too often, people are taken for granted. Quite often, we'll thank somebody when they did give us something. But do you thank people when you don't get something, when somebody tried? Do you thank them when they tried to help you but weren't able to? Or when they just took the time to listen? And do you remember to thank them when the advice that they gave you led you somewhere valuable? In fundraising, there are a number of people who actually adopted the principle, the Chinese principle, the Chinese custom of thanking the person who gives you a gift seven times. That may seem like a lot, but successful fundraisers have worked out a system to make sure that their donors get 
their seventh, and even their eighth thank you. So the authors of this book, Jan and Bert, How to Really Use LinkedIn, in chapter one, have even more tools for you on online and offline networking in chapter one of their book, How to Really Use LinkedIn. Remember, go to the show notes and there's the link where you can download it. So by the way, I learned something from this show that I'm going to apply to you right now. Hopefully you've enjoyed the knowledge that we've given to you. One of the things that we really want to help people with is refining their websites and doing a website evaluation on every customer that we deal with to help them improve the quality of their website. People can sign up for a website evaluation at reallivemarketing.com. Hey, and then now that I've asked, I got to thank. Thanks for listening. Hope to have you back again next week for another episode of Real Live Marketing. 